They told me for years there was no money in podcasting. Well, they were all wrong. Uh, ESPN recently had a top 100 baseball players of all time. We're not going to go through all 100 because that's... Uh, we, have, we have stuff to do. We're going to go through some notables. Um, and by notables, I mean about a third of the list. So, sure. before we start with that, uh, notable snubs. Jeff Bagwell and Mike Mussina. Both Hall of Famers. Not on the list. Yeah, I mean, both of those guys had unbelievable careers. I would, I would definitely love to have seen both of them on that list for sure. I'd, I'd put them in like the '80s, early '90s. Like they're not, they don't, they're not like top twenty-five, top fifty. But I would put them. No, definitely not. I would put them. I would put them in the list. Now, you, yeah. you, 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 you look, you look at a fifty through one. Any comments before we actually go through these? Any um, your thoughts on the list overall? There's a lot of things I agree with on this list. A lot of things that go. Man, who came up with this list? They need to be taken out back and shot. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. So first of all, like I'm not really a huge fan of lists like this because I feel like the comparison from era to era is just way too hard to do. And it's mm. totally unfair to a lot of these mm. guys. I mean, like you've probably heard the arguments before, like, well, don't you think that like so-and-so if he had played back in those days he would have hit 80 home runs or if such and such a player from the past would have been in our day he would have struck out 200 times there's no way he would have hit that many home runs or whatever you know stuff like that there's there's so many arguments to be made um in that respect and so how do you measure the greatness of these guys up against each other um and i don't even believe in you know using the numbers like the the era plus or era minus or you know whatever all those all the fancy um saber numbers I, I love that there is so much, there are so many stats um, in the baseball world. That's part of what drew me to baseball, but I still don't know that it's a fair comparison that can be made. So I'll, I say that as, you know, my, my precursor to what I'm going to say in all of this, because, you know, like, how can I say, oh, uh, just for example, like Warren Spawn doesn't belong in number 47. Well, how do I know? You know what I mean? Like, aside from looking at his numbers. So, but I would look even at number 49. I don't know. I just personally think the big hurt deserves a little bit more uh, love than that. What are your thoughts on that? Interesting. Cause I did mention Frank Thomas. Um, <laughs> I was a little, I was a little hurt at 49. Cause honestly, I think it's a little high. Really? I think, I think it's a little high. I saw, I saw Jim Tomei at 98 and I got really upset. I was like, all right. Uh, Frank, you're gonna put Jim Tommy 98, but Frank Thomas number 49. It's because of those commercials he's been doing recently um, for testosterone. Um, I I literally put my notes, put his ass in the 70s. <laughs> maybe that's a little too <laughs> maybe that's a little too harsh. But listen, Frank Thomas, 500 home runs. You know, he played for the White Sox. I think maybe his whole career. I could be wrong. It looks um, like he played for the A's and J's as well. A's and J's. That's why I forgot he was on the Blue Jays. But great career, Hall of Famer. I really like Frank Thomas, but I thought 49 was a little high for him. But um, I do like you put the caveat of it's not fair to compare different eras. And yeah, that's a thousand percent true. It's not fair to compare eras because, yeah, if you put Babe Ruth in today's game, he'd probably be on the bench. That's just the reality of the game it's in. And again, if you put a pitcher back there and he wouldn't make it a year in the league because they pitch too often. So it works both ways. Uh, yeah. Again, with these lists, super subjective. Like... I got, I'm getting, I'm really mad at this list, but I shouldn't be because it's a list that doesn't really mean anything. But, um, <laughs> number 100, Barry Larkin. Okay. Interesting choice for Barry Larkin, number 100. Uh, of nine, all time, though. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. Of all time. I was like, okay. I was like, you got to start somewhere. All right. <laughs> Barry Larkin, fine. But immediately, Phil Negro, number 99, knuckleballer, 300 wins, 3,000 strikeouts. That's low. Yeah. Low. Really low, really low, yeah. Jim Tomey, 98. We already covered that. Uh, 94, Bryce Harper. I thought it was interesting. It's, he's, he's been around for almost 10 years, I think. But he's, yeah. he's got a long way to go in his career. By, the, by When they make this list 20 years from now, he'll probably be top 50. Are they saying, though, that like if his career were to end today, he would still be in that spot? That's what I'm assuming. Mm, see, I don't know if he belongs in the top 100 of all time just yet. That's fair. That's fair. But I think that's why I put him 94. Because it's right. like recognizing, listen, this guy, you, you got to put over some of the guys in today's game. Because yeah. if, if you did a if you did a list of 100 people and didn't put any players today, I think it's like, well, why am I watching baseball then? Right. 
So what I, do I you think, think? Okay. So what do you think? Um, how high do you think Harper might be able to go? What do you think his ceiling is on this list? If he has another great 10 years, say. I think, I think his list, I think his height is top 50, no more than top 35. Okay. I, th I think he's a great player. He's won a few MVPs already, but I don't think he's going to be breaking any records. I don't think he'll bat 300. I think he'll be a franchise player that was just, you know, was a hype at a high school that paid off. No, that's a very fair assessment. I was thinking like maybe he could creep into the top 20, but now that I think about it, there's no way. There's no way he could get top no. 20. I mean, it's you look just, at the it's... list of guys that are in there and I just don't see him exceeding any of them. No like matter by, how good he does in the next 10 years. By the time he retires, baseball will have been around for like 150 years. Think mm -hmm. about that. That's crazy. That's true. Uh, 89, Shulis Joe Jackson. Hey, I'm just, glad he, I'm just happy he made the list. I mean, again, I'm, I'm not a huge MLB historian. I, I know the name and I know that he has got a place in the history of the game. You know, part of it is a dark place, but then, you know, he also was one of the all-time greats. And so, yeah, it's good to see him on that list for sure. 81, Mike Piazza. I just go, LOL, Met fans. <laughs> My Mike Piazza, Hall of Famer, great player, franchise player, also well-liked, very well-respected. 81, it's a good place for him. Uh, yeah, I would say so as well. I mean, he, he fits the list, and he doesn't really fit terribly high in the list, but you look at the impact that he made, the length of his career. Um, he, I don't want to say he, re he revolutionized the catching position, but he was one of the first you know, in this modern era of slugging catchers. Before him, I can't really think of very many catchers. Um, yeah. You know, there, there might have been just a small handful that were able to hit the ball the way that he could. That's a very good point. It was him and Pudge, Ivan Rodriguez, were like the two sluggers. But no, Mike Piazza, that's a very, very, very good point. Uh, 77, Vlad Guerrero, which is a crime. Vlad Guerrero needs to be in a top 50. I, I love that guy. Vlad Guerrero, I love his son. Like, I love, I love everything about this guy. This guy took a ball in the dirt and put it in a seat. And there's a double because the ground first, right? That's just something. That he could take a ball that is in, at his eyes and put it over the stadium. He could, take, he could take a ball from the fence at right field and throw it into the dugout. This guy was just unbelievable. Vlad Guerrero, 77, that's a crime. I mean, he's a generational talent. You know, when you look at what he did and how he did it, um, I love the fact that he could hit for power with a high average with very few strikeouts and even in his younger days he was stealing bases like crazy as well so uh, i think he, he he needs to be higher he was you didn't uh, we didn't get around to this before but he was one of my top my favorite players growing up like you, you yeah. said favorite players all time i didn't get to that but vlad guerrero would definitely be the guy mine too when i was playing mvp baseball 2005 he was always my cleanup hitter i don't care what anyone says he's my cleanup hitter uh yeah. justin verlander number 72 also very low for me. I put him in the top 50 as well. I put him probably like 48. I I would say he's probably right where he is. Um, I don't know. Like I, I would actually have to kind of look at which pitcher ranked ahead and behind him to see if he fit kind of within the pitchers. Just because I know that they even said in their rankings it was hard for them to rank the pitchers with the hitters just because you're, mm. you're looking at two completely different skill sets. So... Uh, looking at him within the pitchers, I would say maybe that's just about right, but I could be wrong. Yeah, also, we make the point all time. It is it is very hard. If they did one from, like, the past 20 years, like 20, 2000 on, top 100, or if they did it, uh, you know, 1950 to 1999 or whatever they wanted to do, there's so many different ways you could do this list. But, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's a valid argument. 69, Ozzy Smith. Hilarious. Perfect. The Wizard. Gotta love the Wizard. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, guys, guys doing that... backflips at shortstop. All right, <laughs> guys, crazy. Yeah, I mean, when you think defense and especially at the, that position, there's no other name that comes up except for Ozzy Smith. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sixty-six number of the beast, Cal Ripken Jr. Wow, shouldn't he be higher? Yeah, he right. Be higher than that. The goddamn Iron Man. He played yeah. what two thousand games in a row, and you put him number sixty-six. That just seems unfair. It seems unfair. Yeah. Well, and especially like, okay, so now that if I look at this and if I were to say like, okay, who would you rather have on your team over the course of a career, Frank Thomas or Cal Ripken Jr.? I'm going to go with Cal Ripken, Cal Ripken. Ripken Jr. 10 times yeah. out of 10. 10 times out of 10. Every time. I yeah. put him top 25, but I was only the top 25 as a guy. Maybe not top 25. I get back. I'll put him in the top 40. Sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay with that. 63, David Ortiz. I thought that was a little low. If I'm being honest. 
Mm, for how, that's for how, tricky. For how clutch he is, how good he was in the playoffs. It's baseball isn't all numbers, man. Sometimes it's sometimes it's character, uh, motivation, and just straight up heart. And David Ortiz has all those better than any player I can match. No, I I can agree with you on that. I mean, like clutch is practically his middle name. Like I don't know, I can't think of the number of times that. You know, you're thinking to yourself, well, if I think it might have been in an article that he wrote in the Players Tribune where he was like, okay, well, I was starting to think, well, if it goes like this and this, then I'm going to be up at the plate in this situation. And if I hit a home run, the game's going to end. And that's exactly what happened. I think it was in the playoffs one year. I don't remember the exact scenario, but probably remember like he did it three times. Yeah. So, I mean, like the guy just, it seemed like things, the table was set for him and he cleared it. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, oh, he owned it. He cleared it, you know, more often than he didn't. So, yeah, I could put him higher on that list, too. But, but then again, career DH. He didn't play half the game. Mm, true, true. I mean, I, that's, that's, that's a good argument. Uh, 55, Reggie Jackson. I think that's about his spot he should be. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Like, again, um, I didn't watch the man as much as, say, I watched, like, Frank Thomas or anything like that, but I would say that they are probably about equal, maybe. I could be wrong. Maybe I would put Jackson ahead of Thomas. So maybe now I'm, I'm backing off on my initial uh, take on, on the big hurt. But uh, so you said 55. So that's about in the same ballpark as Thomas. So I'm going to say yeah, that's okay. Thomas is 49. Yeah, I, right. think, I think that's a fair place to put him. Uh, Clayton Kershaw on a 52. I think he deserved top 50. Barely, like 49. I think he's just off just as hair. Because Clayton Kershaw is the best pitcher of my generation, hands down. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I mean, he's still a guy that you look to and you, and you expect him to, to get her done, you know, every time he's on the mound. Um, the way he prepares himself and, uh, you know, he... How old is he now? Like 34, 5? If or that, even, if that right. he's probably exiting his prime. Right, but he's still going to probably be around for another few years once they get the players on the, on the field again. Um, so I could see him maybe finishing his career top 40. I agree. Uh, yeah. Number 46, each Ichiro. I thought that was very fair as well. Yeah, you know, there's certain aspects of his game that I guess you could say are lacking, especially when you're looking at an all-time greats list. Um, maybe maybe power being one of the only ones. That and, you know, championships. Um, but the guy was outstanding on defense. What did he win? Like 10 straight gold, gold gloves? Something like that? Something crazy. Like, yeah, this, and his, his... plus hits in 10 straight years and and his impact on the game. He had 3,000 hits in the U.S. And he started late. Age 27. Like, ex- like excuse me? You, you started your <laughs> career in the beginning of your prime. You still got 3,000 hits? If you include his career in Japan, he has like, what, over 5,000 hits? I think, well, I mean, he surpassed Pete Rose, if you, if you include his NPB numbers. Yeah. And that was another kind of sore spot I had w- with, uh, with Pete Rose was that when he was asked about that, he was like, yeah, but that doesn't count because he didn't do it in the major leagues. I did all of mine in the major leagues. So I'm still, the, you know, the greatest hitter of all time. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Pete. So me and and you even if know. you think that, man, just have a, have a little bit of grace. You like, know, it's okay to think that. Yeah. But there's the right way to say things. <laughs> Because no, you can't exactly just right. you can't just disrespect an entire professional league of baseball, like Japan ball. No, it's not the major league baseball. You can make the argument that the MLB is better, whatever that means, but you can't discredit that the whole Japanese league of baseball is not professional. They're pros, They're a thousand percent professional. And Ichiro is prime example because he came here and almost broke your record. So. Not that this could ever happen, but in a fictional universe, if you put Pete Rose in Japan until age 27, how many hits would he have gotten compared to how many he got in, you know, up until age 27 in major leagues? Would it have been a lot more than he actually got or not? It's hard to say because the pitchers in Japan are actually quite good. You and know? the ball's different. Yes. Yeah. So, Everything about the sport's different. Yeah. I mean, hats off to Ichiro even for making that adjustment. Um, you know, coming from Japan all the way to America is a huge you know, physical, mental, everything adjustment. And so to do that mid-career and still excel is unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, we talked Nolan Ryan, uh, I think top 25, number 42. Number 41 is Satchel Page. <sighs> That's a sin to me, man. <laughs> Satchel Page, especially. Uh, this guy was one of the best of his era. Like, hands down, that early stages of baseball, he was unhittable. 
Do you know anything about Satchel Page? I I don't. I mean, like I I know the name. I've looked up a little bit about him, but I any comment that I make would sound very uneducated. So That's I'm going to go with what you what, what you're saying as yep. well. Yeah, it's just it's okay. Will I'm right? <laughs> you're going to say I'm right. It's totally <laughs> fine. Uh, 39 Yogi Berra. Shocking. I love. Yogi Berra, I'm happy he's this high, but from being honest, he should not be number 39. Do you think his likability comes in uh, with this? Because he was a very likable character, was he not? His baseballisms, it's like it's it's fit, it's 40% physical and like 80% mental. I butchered the quote, but like, yeah, his Yogi isms. I mean, granted, the guy has like 11 World Series rings as a player and a manager. He's one of the most winningest players of all time in history, baseball, baseball history, so, or sports history for that matter. Yeah. So I guess if you consider winning fair, but as terms of his skill and his stats and as a player, I don't I think 39's high. Okay. Yeah, I, I could go with that, but I think um I, I don't know how how he was as a catcher either. He's a good catcher. But it is very a very demanding catcher. position. And yeah. so that could have factored in a little, anyways. Yeah, you know, catchers, yeah, numbers on catchers are taking a hit because they're on their knees all day or crouching all day and it ruins their knees uh 38 jackie robinson i think a touch too low yeah i would say so as well i mean look at the impact that he made on the game yeah. and that in itself um definitely you know but but beyond that the numbers you know what i mean like his numbers are outstanding and i think he could have been a lot higher on this list than he was i would have put him maybe top 30 I would have put him 24 because I, I think 42 is too low and make it backwards. All right. That's my reason. There you go. <laughs> there sure. you go. Uh, Pete Rowe is 34. We talked him to death. I think he should be top 15. Uh, I'm assuming you think he's a little high. I don't. Um, in terms of what he did on the field or what he accomplished as a player, no, I, I wouldn't because he didn't use any substance that affected his performance or made him a better player. You know, like even the gambling, like you said, if anything, the gambling probably made him a better player because he was putting that money on himself. Yeah. But what he accomplished as as a player, um, I would say that he's low. I wouldn't say that he's high. Interesting. All right. Respect, respect, respect to the respect to the game. That goes a long way. Uh, Thirty one. Mariana Rivera. Oh, I mean, greatest closer of all time. And this is a tough one to gauge simply because there were no closers for how many years of baseball's history, right? So that's a great point. That's a very, very good point. I didn't even think of that. Hmm. Yeah, but what he did, man, with, with just that one pitch a fastball. and how long he did it. A you cut I mean? fastball. Yep. That's all it is. A cut yeah. fastball that's literally unhittable. And, and, you know, look at his playoff ERA. Was it like 0 0.7 for his career? Yeah. In the playoffs? Yeah. I mean, just like ridiculous. You know, you're talking about Ortiz and his, his clutch factor. Well, what about Rivera? I mean, the only time that I saw him fail in the playoffs was against the Diamondbacks. <laughs> and that was kind of, I'm, I don't want to say a fluky hit, but it certainly wasn't a clean hit, right? Yeah. Luis Gonzalez, little, I don't want to talk about it, but I'm going to talk about <laughs> it. That is, that, honestly, that hurts more than 2004. 2004 hurts because it was the Red Sox and I was like 10 years old and it was the worst day of my life the day after they won the World Series. <laughs> but, right. you know, David Ortiz is Mariano's kryptonite. That .7 ERA, whatever it is, half that is from David Ortiz. The other one's Luis Gonzalez. Luis Gonzalez, <laughs> bloop single, 2001. Luis Gonzalez also took steroids. So fuck that guy. Um, but that hurt, especially because it was right after 9-11. You know, that was right. the one time the whole world, or the whole country at least, won the Yankees to win a World Series. The only time ever. Now or forever. And Arizona wins. What? Oh, so Schilling right. was on that team. So that's why I hate Kurt Schilling too. Oh. Go, <laughs> I, think, I think Kurt Schilling pitched game six, that clinching game. So that, or game seven, whatever it was. So, yeah, yeah Mariano, right. too low. Well, and you want to talk about likability factor as well. I mean, who didn't like Rivera, right? He was just yeah. one of the nicest guys ever in the game. Yeah. It's like when, when he retired, you know, that, that last season, he did his whole tour, uh, him and Jeter. Like, you know, even Red Sox fans, as fickle and as disgusting as they can be, you know, they tipped a hat to both of them. You know, that they were, they were class acts, tour class act. So I love my Ron Rivera. He's been one of my favorite players of all time. But my favorite player of all time is number 28, and that's Derek Jeter. And God damn it, this isn't the biggest crime of the century. I don't know what is. Where would you have ranked him? I would have put him top 15. Oh, wow. I think that's pretty high. I mean, 
very long career, very excellent career, very good hitter. Um, his defense, I don't know. You could go both ways. I mean, people make arguments both ways on that. Um, I don't know. I mean, you could be right. It's kind of hard to say. I mean, you know, he he definitely also was. He had what five World Series wins? Is that right? Yeah, five or six. Although I do see that we're gonna go. I think we're going through. We're gonna go through the top fifteen, and I don't know who I'd replace. So I put top fifteen because he's my favorite of all time. But I'm looking at his top fifteen, and I can't think of anyone to replace him with. Maybe Mike Trout, but that's a maybe. Mm, right. See, I would have. You know, number thirty was Pujols. I would have put Pujols slightly ahead of Jeter. Truth be told. Okay. I don't want to hear why. <laughs> I don't even, well, there's some bias there. I, mean, I really like him as well. So fair enough. All right. Uh 27. Roberto Clemente. Surprised he was this high because his career is cut short because you know um he died in a plane crash. Right. But he his last game, he got his three thousandth hit. And then he yeah, died going going to I believe Haiti was the earthquake. Or Dominican Republic, I think it was his home country. Uh, Nicaragua, is Nicaragua. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he died in the plane crash. Tragic, absolutely tragic. But twenty-seven on the list. He would have. He would have been twenty-seven if he played a full career for sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I think again, like his name lives on through the award, and I think that may be one of the reasons that he's ranked as high as he is. And I think I think it's a pretty fair uh, assessment. Yeah. You know, this list can be can be a, a bunch of criteria, impact inside and outside the game. You know, the guy was humanitarian, so that's got to count for something. Yep. 26, A-Rod. Okay. I, great Old. numbers, great career. Um, again, if you're – are you, are you pe penalizing guys for peds on this list or not? If you're not, I think you need to be higher. I think they're not because Barry Bonds is number eight. Right. <laughs> so they're probably not. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, I would probably put a rod somewhere around twenty. Then me as well. Me as well. Uh, Randy Johnson, number twenty-four. Thought that was perfect. I loved Randy Johnson, and I think this is a great spot for him as well. I mean, the yeah, just a crazy stretch of years in his prime, where you know when he figured out control. Good luck hitting that guy. He was also on that 2001 Diamondbacks team. That slider was unhittable. Mm -hmm. uh, 23, Ricky Henderson. I think that's also perfect. One of the greatest players of all time. It's tough to argue. Like, we're arguing for a lot of guys being higher, but I would almost say put him higher. Um, you know, his impact as not only a base runner, but a leadoff hitter. Um, and then if you, if you throw in some personality factor, I mean, not everybody liked Ricky Henderson, but he always had something interesting to say. And <laughs> I love that about him. All right, 22, Tom Seaver, which I went, ooh, okay. Okay, Tom Seaver, one of the greatest pitchers of all time. Um, see, this is where I think Nolan Ryan probably should. I think I probably would switch Tom Seaver and Nolan Ryan. Where was, sorry, Ryan's further down the list? Like further? Nolan Ryan's like, very much further down the list. Nolan Ryan was number 42. Okay, yeah, I, I could swap those two out quite easily. Yeah, I don't know Seaver well enough or what he did or how he fit into his era well enough to say. But, um, I mean, I know Nolan Ryan a lot better, and Ryan's numbers are just, they speak for themselves. Yeah. Cy Young, number 21. I mean, they named an award after this guy, and I can't give him top 10? <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. I'm being serious. Come on now. There's a reason they named the award after him, and it's not just, like, so, for example, right, the Japanese equivalent, or what they call the equivalent, is the Eiji Sawamura Award. And this is a guy that um, died, I think, at age 27 in World War II. Oof. Yeah, and they named the award after him because of, well, I mean, he did have an outstanding short career, but also in that barnstorming tour in 1934, he struck out, if I'm not mistaken, it was Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and Jimmy Fox um, back to back to back. And he, he allowed one run. It was a solo shot to Gehrig in a 1-0 loss. That would have been the first time a Japanese team ever beat an American team on Japanese soil, or at least, you know, at that level. And so his, his spirit and, you know, of course the, the award was named, uh, well, I guess the same would be true of Cy Young after his death. Um, but there's a difference there, right? Like Cy Young actually had a full career with unbelievable numbers, whereas yeah. Eiji Sawamura's career was cut short. 
so yeah, I agree with you there. Like you're naming the award after the guy because of what he accomplished and because of what he, um, I guess, stood for as a pitcher. And it's always the funny joke. Who's one of the greatest pitchers of all time? Never, to win, never to win a Cy Young. Cy Young. Cy Young. <laughs> Cy Young. Hilarious. Uh, number seventeen, Roger Clemens. Okay, I think that's fair. Yeah, uh, seven Cy Young awards. Um, hard to argue with that. And again, if there's no Peds penalty, then I think that's fair. Uh, sixteen, Joe DiMaggio, Jolton Joe. I think that's also fair. Wow, like 56 straight hits, pretty crazy stuff. Um, yeah. Again, this is a guy whose career I didn't obviously didn't get to follow or anything like that, but certainly, yeah, all the talk, um, it fits. If you got a record that's never, if that, that's never going to be broken, you deserve to be pretty high. Yeah, I would maybe swap him and Trout, at least for now, and maybe Trout overcomes him in the next few years or I, you know, by I, the end of his career for sure. Yeah, top 15. Here we go. Mike Trout, I think he's very high for this list. And I think they only put him in there because... He is the face of baseball next to Shohei Otani. Right. And again, this I think is maybe extrapolating on his career numbers because if you look at, you know, his cumulative stats, he's not anywhere close to anyone else that's in, say, the top 30. Yeah. So um, maybe there's a little bit of hope added into this that he will be, you know, like I would say he might even be top. Well, he, he could be top 10, if not, maybe even top five, if he continues to have, you know, uh, say five plus years of greatness. But right. I don't know about 15th right now. I agree. So we're going to go through the top 14 right now. I, I agree with all of these picks except for one. I want, I'm going to see if you can pick out what it is. Okay. So 14, Greg Maddox. 13, Ken Griffey Jr. 12, Honus Wagner. 11, Pedro Martinez. 10, Stan Musial. Number 9, Walter Johnson. Number 8, Barry Bonds. Number 7, Mickey Mano, which mwah. Poetic Justice. Number six, Lou Gehrig. Number five, Ty Cobb. Uh, Ted Williams, excuse me. Number four, Ty Cobb. Three, two, one, Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, and of course, Babe Ruth, because obviously. So which one of these doesn't fit on where they are? Ooh, that's really hard. Um, if thinking like me, I spoke to folks for almost like an hour and a half now. Think like me. Who do I go? Wow, they don't deserve to be there. Just looking at this list, um, I would probably say um, you would say maybe Pedro. No, I think Pedro is actually perfect. I, okay. I do as well. Yeah. Uh, who's your daddy, man? Come on, the Yankees. Uh, Willie Mays. I'm shocked Willie Mays is number two. Absolutely. Okay. Sh absolutely. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it. All right. I'm a big fan of the catch and the say hey kid and all that stuff too. But number two. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. True. Ahead of ahead of Hank Aaron is pretty shocking. Hank ahead Aaron, of Ty, Ty Cobb. Cobb, Ted Williams, yeah. Lou Gehrig. You know, if you want to put a number six move everyone else down a peg, I think it's a perfect I think it's a perfect top ten. Right. Maybe Griffey for Stan Musial, because I don't know a lot about Stan Musial, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. But I think his top ten is outstanding. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I think that you could probably ask, like, you know, you're saying who wrote this list, who did this. Um, you could probably ask a dozen, you could ask two dozen guys to name the top 10 of all time. And you'd probably get at least eight to nine of them exactly the same on all those lists. Yeah. Maybe just in a different order, depending on their fandom. Right. But yeah. they're all they're all in the list, you know, uh, Ruth, Aaron, and Cobb are probably your top three in one way, shape, or form. Right. But yeah, that's 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 the hundred. Uh, Honus Wagner, I'm glad Honus Wagner is number twelve. You know the tiny baseball card. Uh, Griffey, yep. if Griffey didn't get injured all those times, he'd probably be number five, to be honest. But oh yeah, the, the injuries just put him down. Greg Maddox, I still think is an underrated pitcher, which is crazy to me because he's one of the greatest of all time. His precision. I saw a crazy stat the other day. It's like he. Out of he pitched like five thousand innings, all these strikeouts, and he only had a three zero count like a hundred times in his career, or one hundred thirty times. Wow! Something, something absolutely ludicrous. And it's like no, that's Greg Maddox for you. He was just unhittable. So absolutely he blew my unhittable. mind when, when uh, as as a young baseball fan that didn't fully understand the game, and I remember reading a quote from him that said the the job of the pitcher is to make the balls look like strikes and the strikes look like balls, and I was like, oh yeah. Wow. Light bulb yeah. goes off. I was like, yeah, that, that is exactly a right there. It. That's great. Yeah. But that's what he did. That's what he did better than anybody else. 